running a constant middle school. I'm Grace. And I'm Jordan. Welcome to the AMS TV news for the week of March 28th. Let's check out today's positive message. Hi, my name is Ian. Today's positive message is by Holocaust sur survivor Werner Reich. If you ever know somebody who needs help, if you know somebody who is, is scared, be kind to them. If if you do it at the right time, it will enter their heart and it will be with them wherever they go forever. Don't forget to order your yearbook. It's a book you'll treasure for years. Go to the site below to order yours. Eighth grade students, tell your parents or guardians that they can purchase ads on this, that same website. When ordering, remember to input the AMS school ID 705202. This Friday is April 1st, and also the day we celebrate teachers for the day. No, it's not a joke. Winners will be announced soon. Good luck for those who entered the raffle to participate. The money from the Teacher for a Day raffle is going to the AMS PTA to fund special school events such as arts and education, guest speakers, and more. Sunday, March 20th, marked the beginning of spring, also known as spring or vernal equinox. Let's learn more. Hi, I'm Charlie. Sunday, March 20th, marked the beginning of spring for 2022. Spring also marks the arrival of the spring or vernal equinox. It is the turning point when daylight hours begin to win out over darkness. On the day of the vernal equinox, the hours of day and night are just about equal. From this day until the summer solstice is June, daylight hours will increase giving us more time in the sun. So take this time to enjoy time outside and take advantage the longer daylight hours. That was interesting. Werner Reich, Holocaust survivor, spoke to our eighth graders last week. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. In the middle of World War II, while Germany was bombing Great Britain, Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill addressed the people of Great Britain, and he spoke to them on the BBC about the German invasion of Russia. And this is what he had to say. The aggressor, and by this he meant the German military, retaliates by the most frightful cruelties. As his armies advance, whole districts are being exterminated. Scores of thousands, literally, scores of thousands of executions in gold blood, cold blood are being perpetrated by the German police troops upon the Russian patriots who defend their native soil. Since the Mongol invasion of Europe in the 16th century, there has never been methodical merciless butchery on such a scale or approaching such a scale. And this is but the beginning. Famine and pestilence 
have yet to follow in the bloody ruts of hapless tanks. We are in the presence of a crime without a name. It took many, many years until a proper name could be found. And the name is the Holocaust, and I'm here to speak about it today. The next question is, of course, what was the Holocaust? The Holocaust was the go German government destruction of selected people and their culture. The Nazis it was their dream that 20 years after the Holocaust, if somebody would have asked what's a church or what's a Jew, nobody would have the slightest idea what they are talking about. Yet there are still people around who claim the Holocaust didn't exist. Who are these Holocaust deniers? Holocaust deniers believe that they imagined supremacy as some master race justifies the murder of everybody else. Never ever debate a Holocaust denier. Because what you're doing is you're giving him a platform. You're saying that you are an intelligent person, you have an intelligent argument, I'm an intelligent person, and therefore we should have a discussion. Never ever do that because truth does not need a defense. It's as simple as that. What caused the Holocaust? During the late 1920s and early 1930s, there was a huge financial disaster throughout Europe and the United States. In we Germany, had they had a completely different solution. They said, eliminate people who are inferior and useless. So they arrested Jews, Catholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, gypsies, black, communists, gay people, handicapped people, and uh, they murdered them. This is how Germany started. And uh, a mere 12 years later, this is how it ended. Was it possible for so much evil to succeed? It has been said that all that is necessary for evil to succeed is that good people do nothing. What kind of a people were the Nazis, really? Nazis were cowards who wrote anonymous letters. They sent letters to newspapers, to government offices, People were arrested, many people committed suicide. And uh, nothing has changed. Because today, people still do the same thing, only they call it cyberbullying. It's exactly the same. And for the same reason, today, many teenagers are committing suicide because they're being cyberbullied that the bystanders encourage bullying. So the here you have a teacher to scrub the sidewalks in the middle of the city. And as you can see, there are lots of onlookers there. And uh, they all enjoy that. Just like in your school, when kids have to pick up books from the floor and other students stand by. This is a picture of my sister and myself in 1933. I used to be adorable. <laughs> this is the town where we lived, beautiful town, and sometimes in the summer we went on little vacations in the mountains or down to the Adriatic Sea, to the ocean. I had a happy childhood. I knew very little about my parents' problems. There's a picture of me when I was about 11 years old. I have no other pictures of myself. In the meantime, Germany kept expanding and occupying all the countries around us. There was no place you could escape to. My mother and was afraid that something would happen to me. I was at that time 13 years old. And so she placed me with one couple who was working for the resistance and my sister with another couple. And there I was spending the next two years developing films and pictures 
for the resistance movement. When I was 15 years old, there was a knock on the door one morning, and uh, half a dozen Gestapo agents walked in. <coughs> they arrested the couple, and they arrested me too. They took me down to the headquarters, and they beat the living daylights out of me. They Wait, locked me up. What is a concentration camp? If you have lots of people living very happily together, and then one group thinks that they are really better than the rest, they can take all the other people and they concentrate them in one little area. There were hundreds of these camps throughout Europe and North Africa. This is the way the place looked. It was old and dilapidated. And we all got a tattoo on our arms. This is where we and this slept. This is the, our typical barracks. There were six people on each level. This is a woman's barrack after liberation. There were only half the people there. There were only three people on each level because the other half left on a death march some months before Barak after liberation. As you can see, there were only three people on each level. And people sometimes ask me, what's the worst thing that happened to you while you were in the camp? The worst thing that happened to me was I was 16 years old and I didn't know from one day to the next whether I'm going to be alive. The, the rest of us, 60,000 of us, we were given a piece of bread and we started on a death march. We walked for a couple of hours and then we stopped and those who couldn't get up were shot. We had walked 35 miles over the three days, and uh, of the 60,000 who had left, 15,000 were dead by that time. And then we were loaded into open railroad cars, and we traveled from Poland to Austria over four days. By the end of the trip, Roughly half the people in the trains were frozen dead. And then things got really bad because there was no food there. And on the 5th of May, two days before the end of the war, we were liberated by American forces. They gave me a slip of paper which told me that I can go back home. I had no money, no directions, nothing. I was just told to leave. And so I hitchhiked back to Yugoslavia. And uh, when I came back to Yugoslavia, I found no friends. I found no family. Instead, there was communism there, which was just as bad as fascism. I stayed under communism for two years. And then I managed to escape to England. And when I came to England, I was 19 years old. I had no education. I had no skills. And I couldn't speak English. So I started working in a factory as a laborer then as a machine tool fitter, and then as a dye maker. I stayed there for about two years, and, uh, and nine years I got married, and I came to the United States. I went In to college. any oppression, whatever it may be, there were four groups. There are the victims, the bully, the just, and the bystander. The victims, we know. And finally, we have the bystanders. I don't like calling them bystanders. 
I prefer to call them the good people who do nothing. If you ever find yourself in an oppression and you're a victim, there's nothing much you can do about it. But if you're not a victim, you can join the bully, you can be one of the just people, or one of the good people who does nothing. To be a just person and do the right thing is very easy. All you do is you judge the situation, understand the problem, solve it, and take action. Don't wait for others. Be the first to act, because other people are waiting for you, you are waiting for them. And then nothing's happening. And remember that just people are just people, just like you. 12 million people were murdered. Who's the murderer? Is it the person who pulls the trigger? Or the good people who don't stop him? Don't be one of the good people who does nothing. Help someone without being asked. Simply ask yourself, what is the right thing to do? And do it. At the beginning of my presentation, I asked a whole slew of questions and I answered them. Now, just by a show of hands, I would like you to answer me just one single question. How many of you will promise to help a friend without being asked? Let's see. That's Thank you very much. Please, don't be a silent. Wonderful. If you keep your promise, you will have the honor of having made it a better world. And you will have the joy and privilege of living in this world. Because silence is not an option. Because indifference kills. Thank you very much. Mr. Reich, this young man wants to know, did the Italians fight with the Germans or against the Germans? The Italians were with the Germans at one point. Uh, however, the Italians split from the Germans, uh, Mussolini split from Hitler when Hitler insisted that the Italians use the same measures that the Germans did, that they opened concentration camps and they persecuted the Jews. And uh, Mussolini said, no, no way in hell am I going to do that. And the Italians and the Germans were on the same path at the beginning, but as the war went on, they split completely. So uh, I last saw her uh, when I was about, uh, yeah, 15, uh, I, when I was uh, roughly 12 years old, and the next time I saw her when I was 27. When I was 12 years old, we were really brother and sister. I was teasing her as she was 16, and then four years older than I was 12. And I was a pain in the neck, like most kids at that age. And uh, when we met again, we were two adults, and both of us were married, and it was a completely different relationship. It was suddenly, we jumped from childhood teasing and annoyance to respect and listening to each other. Nobody knows. The only thing which we do know is that people get murdered, people get robbed of all the properties that they have, People, families get destroyed. War is horrible. You cannot imagine 
what war is. When your house is destroyed, when everything that you had for years and tried to build up gets eliminated within a day. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's uh, the old saying holds true that in a war it doesn't matter who is right, but who is left. In other words, who's still alive at the end. That's all I can say. I say something about another person that, may, that is absolutely untrue and you don't bother to check it out and you fully believe it. And it's an extreme example, you know, that the only way we can, uh, you can improve your studies in the school is by getting rid of all students who are higher than you, you know, because they talk down on you, they talk down on you, therefore, therefore get rid of them. And you believe that, you know, and you follow this garbage. And that's been happening for uh, not five years, ten years, it's been happening for thousands of years. And people come up with something really stupid you know, unreasonable, and you believe it. You know, you say, hey, I want to succeed, so let me get rid of this guy, and let me get rid of this guy, and I'm, I'm fine, you know, I'll be successful. So you get rid of it. Okay, so Master, can you see? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can. When I went into hiding, I was 15 years old when I was arrested from 13 to 15, I was hiding. And I came out of the camp and I was something like uh, 93, 94. No. <laughs> Is that what you are now? Are you 93 now? I'm 94. Oh, God bless. God bless. <laughs> I have no complaints. I've been really, really lucky. I, I, I consider myself very, very fortunate. Don't see, you know, you can compare yourself, you know, we tend to compare ourselves. You say, oh, these people are so much rich, I'm, uh, you know, so rich and I'm so poor, you know, I wish that, you know, but then look at the other side, you know. You know, as long as you're alive, you can become rich if that's what your ambition is. And if you're dead, you become just dust. I, when I was in Auschwitz, we had a saying, you know, I'm happy that I'm in Auschwitz. If I wouldn't be happy, I'd still be in Auschwitz. Might as well be happy. Hmm. In other words, I'm satisfied with what I have. I don't get upset. I find that I can live with little just as much as with a lot. And uh, the most, the only thing that really, really matters is you. Are you healthy? You know, if you are healthy, uh, forget about all the other stuff. The other stuff is all garbage, it's all decoration. You, know? you have to accept how things are. I keep frequently telling the students about the two prisoners who are in a prison cell and they look down into the prison yard and one of them sees mud and the other one sees stars. Wow, thanks to Warner Reich for sharing this incredible story. That's all for now. Thanks for watching the AMS TV News. Have a great week.